So yeah. if you are nourishing your stomach, you're also nourishing your, your mind brain. As well. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Rosemary, <laughs> welcome to the Hipster Veggie Thank you, Channel. Thank you, Jasper. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here, man. <laughs> Guys, I'm so excited to have Rosemary here on the channel today. She's a very dear friend of mine. <laughs> um, and before we get into the video, Rosemary, do you want to introduce yourself yeah. to the people? Yeah, so I'm Rosemary, as she just said, and I'm a medical herbalist and I help women get rid of period pain. So I'm all about holistic care, looking at your diet, um, your mental health, you know, your lifestyle as a whole, and just sort of treating you from a whole perspective mm -hmm. as opposed to just shooting drugs at you. So the topic of today's video is all about anxiety and depression mm -hmm. and kind of how herbs, how herbs help with that, exactly. how they help um, like people manage yeah. that kind of thing. So I've got a couple questions yeah, for you. Sure. Um, and the first one is how do herbs actually even affect the mind because mm. for example if i'm having a day where i'm feeling a little bit anxious or stressed before i go to bed why does mm. having a cup of chamomile tea make me yeah. feel relaxed yeah. and easy to go to bed yeah that's a really good question so basically herbs have the ability like a really amazing ability to work on neurotransmitters okay. and that's just a, a way of just um chemical messengers in the brain right, so okay. everything is governed by the central nervous system mm -hmm. so when we're sort of like overexcited or like really jittery or like wired before bedtime there's a lot of like neuronal activity going on in the brain mm. and so herbs have a way of sort of almost crossing like the brain blood brain barrier to slow down the activity and it works one of the ways it works it's through a neurotransmitter called GABA so GABA is basically the brain's natural stress reliever okay. and it works by almost putting a break on things so when there's too much neuronal excitability in the brain mm -hmm. when you drink that chamomile tea or lemon balm or you know passion flower mm -hmm. it basically put, puts a break on that excitability so it helps to slow things down okay. so that you are able to sort of go to sleep or you're able to you know gather your thoughts together and you're not as wired as okay. you would be without those herbs taking mm -hmm. effect. I say if I'm feeling really stressed mm -hmm. out, a neurotransmitter might send a, a message to my stomach and I'll mm -hmm. get butterflies. Exactly. Is it like that? Exactly. Right, okay. Or um, because again, we produce um, neurotransmitters in the gut as well. So say something like serotonin, mm -hmm. hence why what you eat affects your brain. Yes, serotonin is produced in the gut. Uh -huh. So sometimes if you have a poor diet, mm -hmm. it then means that the gut doesn't have the resources it needs to properly sort of extract the foods or the nutrition from the food that we're eating. Mm -hmm. So therefore things like serotonin don't properly act. Yeah. So, so they don't, they don't um, carry up their function properly. Yeah. Um, and then, what the question was but yeah, uh, yeah. that makes sense that <laughs> makes sense so basically for what i've understood from this so mm -hmm. how do herbs affect the mind the neurotransmitter is basically the messenger from the brain to the rest of the body mm -hmm. and herbs kind of either enhance those messages or stop those messages exactly. from happening yes exactly. that is amazing yeah. all right cool so following on from that the next question i have for you is some examples of herbs to use. Mm. So like, say if you're feeling anxious or you're feeling, I don't know, low or depressed, mm. you're just not feeling yourself, right? Yeah. There's, obviously there's yeah. different extremities of how you can yeah. feel this. Yeah. Um, but what would you suggest like maybe two herbs that you would suggest yeah. for that kind of situation yeah I mean as you've mentioned like there's so much that goes into you know the mental health of a person so mm. I need to stress that it's not just herbs sometimes people do need counselling yeah. or especially when it's the extreme of say depression then yeah. there are sort of counselling groups that you can talk to mm. or someone you can talk it's to it's definitely not it can't just be food heals it or herbs heal it yeah. or this heal it's got to be like a little bit of yeah there's a multidisciplinary approach so sometimes it might take counseling mm. it might take you know a physical hands-on work you know um you know herbs diet mm. you know things like looking at your relationships what you know the the, the type of relationships around you yeah. Um, but as far as herbs, you know, some of my favorites are lemon balm. Okay. So that's something that you can find like growing around you quite easily. It's a it's a mint family herb, so it's sort of got the same sort of um, characteristics as a mint. Okay. Um, but it smells so amazing. Like even when Does you like sort like of touch the leaves, yeah, it's okay. so uplifting. Like okay. it's like almost like sunshine in leaves. Mm -hmm. It's like how can you not be happy, you yeah. know? And you can make that as a tea. Uh -huh. So just sort of pick the leaves. 
and um, you know make it as a tea but obviously you need to know what you're picking mm. but you can really tell by the scent you know it's got a very sort of citrusy lemony scent mm. um, lemon balm is one and then even lavender lavender is another one mm. to sort of uplift the mind to reduce anxiety to induce sleep as well so if yeah. you're sort of feeling jittery lavender is a really good one to just sort of induce um, calmness in the body and you can you can just purchase those as loose leaf you can do yeah so we can leave some links in the description of like where people can buy them from like for you know it's really safe sort of quality herbs as well for sure that would be Um, good yeah and yeah they're really just you know easy to easy to use without sort of any side effects Mm, yeah I think the good thing I use lavender in a um, essential oil diffuser Mm, just before I go to bed just put that on for like half an hour and it turns off after it's like on a timer and that really it just makes the room smell nice Yeah. and I think even just the idea for me it's almost it might even be like a bit of a placebo effect a bit of like you know everything working together like it actually works and I believe it will work exactly so it does work exactly and it just makes me feel relaxed and it's part of like my go to sleep routine Mm. to just pop that on and do it and then as a part of my morning routine it's like having a lemon ginger and manuka honey tea Mm. and even just the action of doing that it makes me feel like okay I'm ready for my day. Exactly. Slow start, yeah? Exactly. Amazing. For sure. And that's <laughs> all stuff that I learned from Rachel. <laughs> really? Before, yeah. Before we met, you think I was on this herbal tea thing? Not at all. Not at all. Oh. Um. So, like, as we said, the the whole thing with herbs is that they're not gonna they're not gonna help you by themselves. I mean, if you're yeah. having um, herbs to help with your depression or your anxiety Mm. or you know your low mood stress whatever it Mm. might be Mm -hmm. it's not just going to be the herbs that are going to cure everything do you know i mean there's nothing in the world that can do that it's got to be as you said multidisciplinary holistic approach um so in terms of food what kind of foods would you say to either have or to avoid when you're feeling a bit stressed out yeah so in terms of i guess foods that are not so great anything that's refined i mean you've heard this a million mm-hmm. times before you guys anything- probably have as well <laughs> <laughs> exactly but anything that's refined uh-huh. so that's been bleached out refined foods refined carbs mm. refined sugars they're going to strip the body of nutrients and if your body's been stripped of nutrients you're not going to have almost the the go-to or the resilience to be able to face the day mentally yeah because your body just doesn't have enough tools Mm. to get on with the day you know so i would say yeah so if it's refined Mm. try and stay away from it um but foods that do help a lot are healthy fats because you have to consider your brain is mostly fat so if you eat healthy fats whether it's you know um tahini Mm. butters nut butters coconut oil um, avocados olive you know things that are just really brain nourishing mm. then that's also going to help your nerve cells to function properly you know so yeah. that way you're not going to get as jittery or anxious when little things happen mm. you find that you're just able to face the day a bit better to cope with it a exactly bit better. because you're eating well you're eating brain, brain healthy food. foods yeah. exactly so that's the thing you know all this you know if low fat this low fat that you mm. want to stay away from that we're oh not about that God, low fat. <laughs> i remember when i used to work like in a in a food in a, in a little cafe yeah and um a woman came in and she was like i want a smoothie and it had like coconut milk and avocado yes. and other stuff like that and she was like oh but it's a bit too fattening i don't want it and i was like girl <laughs> you need it like we yeah. all need it like this demonization of fat is so yeah. detrimental for the brain because as rosemary said literally our brain is made out of fat our neurotransmitters need fat Mm -hmm. to function properly so if you are lacking in fats healthy fats Mm -hmm. obviously he's not saying go out and eat a bacon sandwich you know what i mean but it's like if you're lacking in stuff like uh walnuts hemp seeds chia seeds um avocado like you said those kind of things you need these omegas to function properly and of course your brain and your stomach are directly connected right exactly so if your brain or your stomach are lacking in something that's gonna you know that's gonna affect everything so if you are nourishing your stomach you're also nourishing your, your mind brain. As well. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So those are actually all the questions that I had for Amazing. you. Amazing. But um, <laughs> you guys have actually been sending in your questions mm-hmm. um, through Instagram and through YouTube. So please keep sending them mm-hmm. in. And I'm going to get Rosemary back next week. And we're going to be <laughs> answering your questions. Um, so if you have any questions regarding herbs, 
um, anxiety, depression, mental health, or anything like that, send them in. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for next week's Yay. video where Rosemary's gonna be answering all of your questions. Amazing. Rosemary, thank you so much for Thank you, Jasper. I'm you. gonna leave all of her links in the description <laughs> box below. Definitely check her out. Check out her Facebook page because she's very active on there and she does some <laughs> brilliant lives on there. Thank you. Hey! <laughs>